Today, or tonight I should say, I'm going to take you on a call ship which included a code STEMI, procedures that became way too dangerous to do, and more fun adventures as a cardiology fellow. Now as a first year fellow, I'm on call once a week. My calls are also in-house, which means that I stay overnight in the hospital. During these call shifts, my primary responsibility as an on-call fellow is being the point of contact for any cardiology related questions for ICU patients and sick patients around the hospital. So let's go ahead and get started with our shift for today. Now every one of my call shifts starts around 4.30 p.m., which means that I finish my day responsibilities. Today that meant a combination of reading stress tests and clinic and heading back to the hospital. And today I managed to get into the hospital right before 4 p.m. Now the first thing that I do in the evening is to review the list of patients in the ICU so I can be familiar with who the patients are, what they're there for, and who the sickest ones are out of the group. I then keep mental note of patients on the list who may have interesting findings on their echoes or imagings and then pull those up to read myself. This patient right here has really bad aortic stenosis aka a very tight valve. This patient on the other end here has a very weak heart which is barely squeezing when I look at their echo. After going through each patient's chart and images I then grab some quick caffeine and snack before the daytime fellow signs out the patients and any updates for the day. Once I have the sign out for all the patients I'll grab the list of my notes and walk the unit to make sure everyone is doing okay at the start of my shift. And just as luck would have it on my way walking over to the unit I hear the word code STEMI called overhead. Now code STEMI means somebody is suspected to have a heart attack based on both their symptoms and their EKG findings. Now obviously as the on-call cardiology fellow I'm responsible to go to all of these. So as I'm walking over to the patient's room I quickly pull up the EKG to know what I'm walking into. So I just got back from this code STEMI. They actually canceled it on my way up. So a little bit of description. A code STEMI is basically where we're concerned somebody's having an active heart attack. My role overnight is usually laying eyes on them while all interventionalists and their team is driving in to plan on taking a look and putting a stent in possibly. Since I'm on site is to figure out are you having a heart attack or not. This patient however already had a catheterization. Somebody had already looked to see if their coronary arteries had some blockages and they actually do but they are being worked up for a possible bypass. And so the question was are they having something new and based off of the EKG that somebody called a possible heart attack on it didn't look much different than the last one and the patient's chest pain wasn't very different compared to what had been the past few days. So going back to do I need to have our interventionalist team come in and fix that and I think the discussion amongst everybody was that it wasn't. And so looking at the EKG, we'll keep an eye on this patient overnight, but not anything extra to do. And then during the day team comes in or the daytime, we'll let them know and uh, they can make any adjustments if they want to act quicker. Now, after getting back to the office, I spend whatever quiet time I get to finish some personal work. The first thing on my to-do list for the night is finishing some modules that I need to actually be able to do research as a fellow. Probably the most boring is modules I've ever done in my life, but still got to get done. Part of being a good fellow is always being on top of your learning and moving down the rabbit hole of learning new stuff in cardiology. There is so much in the field of cardiology that I didn't even know exist, and so thus there is so much I need to learn. And when you have a decent evening like I've had so far, it is a great time to learn. So here is what we're learning today. So I'm going to be starting ICU in just a few weeks, which is going to be a little nerve-wracking being a first-year fellow and running the ICU. But one of the things that you have to really get comfortable with is what we call mechanical support. If somebody's heart is not pumping well, then we can put devices into their hearts and essentially allow them to pump a little bit better or give the time for the heart to heal and allow these devices to kind of do the function of the heart for at least a short term. And so one thing that I feel or need to get more comfortable with is like knowing do I go up on the support, do I go down, and what type of lab values, clinical signs do I use. Um, contextually, I think I know what to do, but I want to make sure that I know all the nitty gritties um, in terms of what to look for on an echo or what to look for on their labs on a daily basis so I can better make decisions for these patients in just a few weeks. Because again, it's going to be me, especially if my attendings are making decisions on going down on things like an impella or a balloon pump or ECMO. I want to be able to know how fast do you do it or how often will you do it or what type of things are you looking at every time you're making some changes. So by no means does this have to make sense to you guys, but this is a great time. So right now it is about 8.26 p.m. I'm definitely getting tired and sleepy and I could be heading to bed right now, but I think it's better use of my time to feel like my knowledge is getting a little bit better. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually pull this up. And on the other monitor, I will start to take some notes on RemNote. So let me show you what that looks like. So this is RemNote. This is a tool that I am going to likely be making a video about at some point in the future. 
But essentially what I have is an inbox for my cardiology learning altogether. So whenever I have topics like I do today, of things that I want to learn more about or make sure that I'm on top of, I will add those in here and it's a growing pile. So as you can see in cardiology, we're really big on studies. And so there is literally a collection of studies that I need to read. And when I'm down on this list and I want to read a study, I can just go there. In addition, if I'm learning something and my attendings tell me something, I'll just put it in this Perl section. And then every time I feel like I've mastered something so for example this right here this is a section that I actually learned about earlier today that I may have already shown in the video but this is me learning about what to do with different types of blood thinners that we give for patients in the setting of heart attacks or ACS and I've already taken a lot of notes um, this probably took me 10-15 minutes but I want to make sure that I store this effectively so what I don't do is I then go ahead and just add some tags so let me do that so as you can see now i've added two tags to this and again i can make a video on remnote if it's not already alive but these are two topics that will pertain so if i ever want to learn anything about dual antiplatelet therapy or acs i can just look up those tags and it will pull up all of these notes that i put into this section but now that this is done this is my system i just literally just throw it in the archive page and it is out of sight out of mind and there it is in addition to everything else that i've been doing with this all the other lectures and studies will go in here so these are some of the studies that i've looked at with their notes uh, but it's a quick easy way that i can search this if i wanted i could actually do flashcards from this entire page but this is my system and now I'm going to go ahead and do some notes on MCS de-escalation using this. This is, how many pages is this? Okay, it looks like a lot. <laughs> Don't know how many, but we will get through this. I will probably do a good amount of skimming and I usually always copy the link of the paper so that way I can refer to this in the future if I need to, which I likely will have to do when I'm on my IC rotation. So with this free time, I began to spend the next 20 to 30 minutes of going through the article and taking down my notes. So just managed to finish reading that article. It is now 8.50. I think I've been reading for what, 20-ish minutes? And this article is absolutely gold. You guys can kind of see the quick notes I was able to write. And not all of this is new to me, uh, but having it in one place, kind of like a second brain, so that way if I need to look up when to go down on somebody's support like their ECMO, these are advanced things that you wouldn't be doing in residency typically, uh, but as a fellow I get to. And so just making sure that I make the right moves by my patients, have this article linked in case I ever want to refer to it. And now if I just go back up to my homepage, this is the nice part of this entire system, is I have all these notes, I've already tagged it with what it needs to be so I can look it up later and I'm just put it in my archive and put it in my archive. There you go. So now it is in my archive and my inbox just looks like this in terms of what type of things I need to look up or are my lists next and that's pretty much how my studying goes. Now again it is 8.50. So I will look at the next thing on my to-do list and likely get ready for bed. Now before trying to get to bed, I'll do a combination of things, which includes having my dinner, which today is chili that my wonderful wife prepared, prepping my clinic notes for the upcoming week, and chart checking some of the sicker patients in the ICU to just make sure that they're still stable. While having my dinner, I'll also catch up on some YouTube. Currently, I'm on a huge marathon video binge. And once these last bits of tasks are done, I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to head to bed. And I feel like as soon as the universe knows that I'm going to bed, I usually get a text or a call, which right now is a call for a request to put in a central line on a patient. Now a central line is essentially an IV that we place commonly in someone's internal jugular vein in their neck. It allows for quick medication administration, blood draws, and allows a nurse to have three ports versus the standard one that comes with a normal IV. It's a procedure that any medicine doctor is trained to do during residency and it's done at bedside using both ultrasound and sterile technique. Now this particular patient was having some issues with the nurses having reliable IVs and ultimately needed some critical IV medications so the request was made for me to put one in. So around 9 p.m. I grab all of the supplies and the ultrasound machine that I need for the procedure, hoping that it'll be a quick one and then we can head to bed soon. But unfortunately, it did not go that way. So just got back from that line, which did not go as planned. Patient continued to move. For any procedure, you want your patient to be as safe as possible while you're having a needle, especially at their neck. So this is one of the scenarios where you try everything to calm the patient, control their pain, their anxiety. And then if you can't, then you just kind of abort and you come up with a plan B because it's just too risky to have a sharp object while a patient is just moving their neck, which happens sometimes. And so you just have to be aware of it and be able to audible. We tried <laughs> for an hour, uh, unsuccessful. So came up with a plan B on how to help with that patient. Um, main is just pain and anxiety control overnight. And if they really need another line, hopefully we can put it in successfully or do it from a different place. Sometimes we can do the groin 
usually not recommended. It's not as clean as you can imagine, something you have to do if, if it's needed. So for this patient, we'll see if we can get them by oral medications when they don't have an IV. And yeah, if they need me, they'll call me. If not, I will try to head to bed. It's 10.30 right now. Um, and I feel like we've done enough this evening in terms of studying and keeping up with everybody. So let's see how much sleep we can get, if any. See you guys later. Now while we wait to see how this patient will do with the oral medications that I prescribe for better pain control and ideally better urine output, I'm headed to the call room to get some sleep. And about three hours into my nap, I get another call. Seems like our friend with the failed line attempt is not doing so hot. The nurse is concerned about his breathing and he needs an IV quick. All right friends, um, back in the room after being called for that one patient who ultimately needed that line. So we went with plan B. This time the patient was much more comfortable, much more compliant with my instructions and able to get that line in smoothly. Just got back to the room and they're doing well. So that's always a nice thing to hear. And usually on these nights when you get called by one nurse or one doctor, usually everyone else's messages somehow just happen to come together, which is fine people need your help, you help them. And so after putting that line in, I got messages of a person's hemoglobin or their blood counts being low. Somebody's blood pressure was kind of low. Another doctor wanted me to lay eyes on somebody they're admitting from the emergency room because their blood pressure was low. And so I kind of saw all these patients or at least looked at their chart. And now I'm just gonna quickly write some notes in terms of just updating everything that I've done, uh, documenting that procedure, documenting my decision-making for that patient, plus other patients that I saw overnight. Um, and it is 4.40, and so hopefully, hopefully, I can get maybe an extra hour plus of sleep. The, usually the way these nights will work for me is that if I can get five to six hours, I can usually make the rest of the day, because tomorrow I get to go home around seven or nine, depending on certain scenarios. And that means I'll have the rest of the day off until I come back to work the following day. So this is Tuesday, uh, Tuesday morning. So I'll have the rest of Tuesday and I'll come back to work on Wednesday. So if you do it right and you get enough sleep during your night, which I've gotten three, four hours so far, and if I get an extra hour plus a nap this afternoon, I can enjoy time with my wife and my daughter and actually have a full day off. So I'm gonna write these notes and I'll catch you guys soon. So I quickly pull up his chart on the computer in the call room just to know what I'm walking into again and go ahead to see this patient. Now while typing up these quick notes for the night, I'm starting to get messages from the nurse before their shifts in. There's another description of what I'll get called overnight. It is about almost five o'clock and usually in the mornings there will be new x-rays on certain patients in the ICUs and sometimes the nurses are not sure if something is normal or not depending on what they see. So this is a patient, this is yesterday, this is today. This is a patient that has a device that we call an LVAD. Basically it's like a pump sitting in the muscle of the left side of their heart which is normally supposed to be able to squeeze blood out to everywhere else but for this patient that muscle is weak and so this pump essentially is bypassing um, part of the function of that heart um, or that side of the heart. And so not only do they have this device, if you can kind of see, they have something coming in here that like loops around. Um, in cardiology, this is like a big thing that we use a lot. This is called a Swan-Gans catheter or a PA catheter. It's basically a fancy IV that goes in the neck and has a catheter with a balloon at the very end that you can put into their right side of their heart and then essentially take it up in the initial part of their lungs and you use it to measure pressures. Um, and this is something that you get 24 seven monitoring of the patient in terms of how much pressure, especially when you have a weak heart, you wanna make sure there's not a backup of fluid. And so if all numbers go up, that means volume is going up and this catheter can pick it up. But every day you wanna make sure that that catheter is in the right place. And you can see this nurse is concerned because it looks different. Here, it kinda of looks like this catheter stops like here. And then here, it looks like it's going much, much further. But the reason I'm not too concerned is she sent me the waveform of what it looks like on the monitor, and it looks like a normal waveform. There's no changes in numbers. And then two, you can see the orientation of this patient is different. Here, the pump is facing this way, and here I'm kind of faced in more. And so I think it's more or less gonna be the same positioning. Um, but just we're turning the patient more and so the line is moving that way. Again, not everyone will feel comfortable calling that, so sometimes you have to look at x-rays, but cool finding and uh, just keep an eye on it and then you go from there. On to the next one. 
Now once I've finished all my notes and messages, I try to get another one hour of sleep before my shift ends. And as soon as I lay down, as we've seen multiple times tonight, the universe will conspire against my sleep and suddenly I hear the words code blue called overhead. Now code blue means that somebody has lost their pulse and is in need for resuscitation. Now as the ICU fellow, I go to all of them in case the reason for their arrest is ultimately cardiac. So it's about 5.20 a.m. and I'm headed to the code while quickly looking up the patient on my phone. Now in this case, this was ultimately a false code as the staff quickly realized that the patient was DNR or do not resuscitate. So the hospital staff respected their wishes and allowed them to pass peacefully without pushing on their chest or giving them drastic medications, which can be a lot for the body, especially for our elderly population. All right, good morning, guys. It is now, let's see, 6.32. Managed to sleep about an hour after that code. That was supposed to be a code. Have somebody that hasn't been treading the right way overnight in the ICU. So what I'm about to do is just brush my teeth. So it's about to be the end of my shift. Go see them on the way out and then prepare to just let the fellow for the day kind of know about all of our fun adventures. Um, and then that's pretty much the day. I feel like I've got enough sleep, so I'm gonna try to enjoy the rest of the day with my wife and my daughter. So good call shift. Um, felt like there's a lot of learning in there for you guys, for me. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed following me on today's um, episode. If you did, hit that like, subscribe, whatever button down below. Hit your comments um, with questions you guys have, and then I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace.